Oh, my ears. I love you. Marry me too, Kyuki. Marry me. <laughs> Marry me, Kyuki. Oh, yeah. I guess I did already marry you. Oh, Kyuki and I have been married since the beginning of time. Stop! It's not my fault your mod showed up, man. <laughs> Is this too loud still? It's like still so loud. Holy shit. It's still so loud in my ears. Where's our art? I got you. I'll, I'm gonna cook up some lesbian art of us. When I get the motivation to draw again. Right? Hi, Rami. Bro, I know. Like... This shit is so loud. I look how I turned it. I turned it almost all the way down, and it's still so loud. <laughs> Holy shit! My fucking eardrums. Hi, Rami. Anger music though. Yeah, I know. I'm excited. John, let's go on a date today. The one who spoke was a well-dressed girl who liked to dream big and call her partner stupidly cute nicknamed like Peachon. Her name was Ame, and she was my girlfriend. Her black skirt fluttered around her thighs as she hovered excitedly, sort of like a fly buzzing over a pile of garbage. She made no attempt at hiding her desire for my attention. <laughs> she is wife, she is me. Yeah, I agree with both. Is it a visual novel? Well, the original is a visual novel. This is like mini games. A plus voiceover Nami? I don't know, I just imagine Peachon kind of being a loser. <laughs> I thought he wasn't real, but I don't know, the lore confuses me. And it was so, so cute. She knew she was cute. Better than anyone, in fact. Every single one of her movements was exaggerated for the perfect fact that it always worked. She was a star of her own show, running 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, because she knew she could get away with it too, because of how adorable she was. She wielded her own cuteness like a weapon that could get her anything she wanted. Although she had a childish charm to her, she had the cunning mind of a veteran tactician. Thanks for working so hard for me all the time. I know you fell asleep at your desk because you were up all night editing videos for me, so I feel bad for waking you up, but... I may fidgeted with her hair and looked at... Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Nami audiobook one. Ame fidgeted with her hair and looked at me apologetically. Her thick, glossy locks hung in two pigtails with a long fringe that covered half of her face. She could cry all she wanted from her head and eye, no one, and no one would be none the wiser. It was an extra layer of protection along with her over-the-top acting. That's my theory anyway. A game theory. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> God damn it. Why is why is my fucking alert box over there now? Get back down here. <laughs> um <clears throat> fuck, I forgot to read the rest. My bad guys. Alright, sleepyhead. I'm gonna go brush my teeth and do my skincare routine and get changed. You better be ready for a date by the time I'm done. She beamed at me, her smile warm and bright like the sun. She was so beautiful and adorable, like a little flower begging me to pick her. How could I ever say no to her? People say that there's every beautiful rose has its thorns, but I think it's a bit different for Ame. Her arms were covered in thin scars that ran across them haphazardly. Why can't I talk? If she had thorns, then those thorns were hurting her too. The flowers don't do that, so what would she be instead? And I don't want to hear you complaining about this date being too short notice or whatever, okay? Love isn't predictable like that, or you don't care about 
me enough to keep up? <laughs> She's so real. A single tear rolled down her cheek from her right eye. All traces of her earlier smile had disappeared in sadness before the corners of her lips downward. She wailed as she swung into a full mental breakdown. She's literally me. <laughs> me, when, me when a minor inconvenience happens and it ruins my whole day. <laughs> me do you you're just with me because you want the super chat i squeeze out for my nerd fans that's called emotional abuse you know <laughs> i think she's cute when she cries of course all this was an act too ame had perfected the craft of crying on command and making it look really convincing as a streamer she needed a precise control over her emotions turning on whether she wanted like a switch elicit certain reactions from her viewers. It was her job to cry and smile with purpose, or even get so riled up she can snap a keyboard in half. I was familiar with all this as someone who lived with her and cared for her in a romantic capacity. Um, guys, I hate, I hate to break it to you, but all of my emotions on stream are real. I generally get that angry at video games. I'm sorry for being a loser. <laughs> There, it is not carefully calculated. I generally get pissed off. <laughs> Just as I knew everything about Ame, I knew that this charade she was putting on was her way of showing her love toward me. I also knew that if I ever saw her crying real tears, it could only mean one thing. That it was over between us. Don't worry, Nami you won't get better at games. Oh wow, thanks. Oh wow, thank you. came in and made a bunch of noise and also gave me food but i was like mom i'm streaming please <laughs> please leave me alone <laughs> okay even though i knew this wasn't real she was still crying and no proper human being would leave the, a girl crying i had to do something to soothe her the tears being fake didn't change the fact that she was deeply stressed from streaming every night and desperately needed a break Putting herself out there on MeTube and social media meant that all eyes were on her. She had worshippers that treated her like a goddess. People who made it their personal mission to make poke fun at her, and others who saw her as a sounding board for their emotions. What do you guys see me as? Do you guys see me like that? At least you're not streaming in the buff like some be In the buff? What does that mean? Like naked? <laughs> It was simple enough to understand how chaos would eat away at one's mental well-being, but only those who'd been through the same thing could truly empathize. Maybe the money and attention really were as intoxicating as she made it out to be, but even so, could this hell truly be worth it to her? Alright! Now that we're going on this date, says me, let's decide on where to go. Choose wisely, because it can make me love or hate you more. Did I also mention the fact that it'll affect the ending you get? Well, now I have. Can I save? Oh, I can. Okay, I made different saves for different, um... I have different saves for different outcomes. Nerds! Every night she would don her silly costume as an internet angel and stream under the, under the name OMG Kawaii Angel, just K Angel from now on, because saying the full thing every time is way too much effort. Her streams gathered hundreds of thousands of nerds all over the cyberspace every night. All of the respect, lust, jealousy, hate, love, and boredom congregated were compiled into a neat little metric known as a mover count. Then, Dinoware would determine how much money she would receive for her efforts. 
It didn't matter what intentions her viewers went into her streams with. The most important thing is that they became another number for the pile of numbers that ended up cash in her bank account. Guys, I do not... <laughs> and boy, did she have a lot of those numbers. I wish it was me. Not to do my own horn, but I had a very big hand in keeping those figures up. Ah, this dude. Hello, fellow bat. This fucking dude. Um, it was hugely dependent on me during her daily life, and most of the logistics of her streams were handled by me too. But that's enough about that. The undeniable thing was her overwhelming charm is what made her career possible. Stats drove people crazy. Yup. Numbers pushed onto the brink. At some point, um, I must have wondered whether I loved her for who she was or for the numbers she produced. One day, yeah, one day. He started off as two broke asses who found comfort in each other without any money in the equation. I think what we had was genuine love for one another. Now neither of us can be so sure anymore. On the other hand, it was possible that we are now too close for either of us to unstick ourselves. No matter how hard she tried to ignore it, there would always be one persistent worry at the back of her mind. Maybe I can't be satisfied with my partner anymore. The image of us splitting could be looping in her head. Oh wow! Oh, wow! It's worse when someone doesn't use the money they get sent. What does that mean? It was something the two of us had to overcome together, though. What does being in a relationship mean? Can we take the steps into further hand in hand? These are questions you have to face. I'm nah, not the middle school dropout. <laughs> Ame was a middle school dropout who had a terrible personality and could do stupid things. But she was always thinking about things much more than the average person. If her head was really as empty as people say, she would have never have made it to a big streamer. She was the kind of person who would rather be direct and spring a surprise date on her partner than try some elaborate scheme to bait me into one. There was the hope that the element of surprise would bring back the butterflies we both felt when we started day two. From a practical angle, there's a good way to assess how one's partner would deal with an unexpected and potentially stressful situation. I mean, you'd all want someone who could handle both well, right? Plus, I'm not really one to talk. I chose this after all. <laughs> Pichan, penis chan. OMG, wait, so we're actually going? Amit's eyes sparkled like a thousand diamonds. I didn't care if this is an act or not. She's so fucking cute. I wanted to believe that underneath her long bands from the left boy eye was also shining like the brightest star in the sky. Yeah, I'm so excited! Whatever happens to us in the future, I just want us to be happy. Yeah, let's make a piss out of our day! Each time I'll go wherever you're going, unless it's chill. No. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Dave, 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 Dave. So we're gonna, we're gonna. Oh shit, there's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm there. There's a lot of options. Which one should we go to first? Cat, which one should we go to first? Uh, if you put batteries on here, she'll be a smaller Nami. <laughs> Nami bad. Nami bad is real. Guys, it's a Nami bad dating sim. Mm. Nami bad dating sim. Ah. So, uh, maybe we should just go in order. I'll do arcade. Taking your girlfriend to the local arcade is like the IRL equivalent of taking a girl in a dating sim tr trawling for secondhand PC parts and then taking your affection meter. But it's a bold choice. Nice one, Pichan. We're already not normal, so I pretend to be each and get an arcade together as Peach. <laughs> I'm ready to get my game on. I knew it was a bit of gamble, but good thing her highness seems pleased. 
<laughs> we got to the giant coin pushing games and their bright lights. Views about how old school games like those crocodile smashing ones were probably the gateway and enjoyed everything the arcade has to offer. It was a wholesome establishment perfect for families which meant that there were none of the usual nerds there. Just a quiet corner of town, nothing weird. I it feels like we're teenagers who just started dating. The two youngsters who wanted to go somewhere fun, but A, didn't have that much money, B, had half the city blocked off to them as minors, A, arcades with an ideal date spot, which food could be had for a few hundred yen. Photo booths just hit different. <laughs> even through all of us, even though all of us had smartphones and a million photo apps now, plus the really big fancy arcades sometimes had bowling alleys and pool tables in, in case. And in case anyone wanted a flex for their girl. Ah, you. <laughs> Not that I really know what that feels like since no one at school would entertain me. I'd always come here the low the price of fighting games and gun blame and like so many guys would come up to me and be like, Oh. Oh, I that's her talking. It's hard to tell sometimes. And so many guys would be like, do you want me to teach you? I could play co-op with you on Gundam if you want. Like, ew, okay, nobody asked. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. But even though I hated how patronizing they were, not gonna lie, I still kind of like the attention. She's real. <laughs> She's real. Um, I sat down in an old, worn-out cabin and began fiddling with her joysticks and buttons, perhaps recalling a combo that some guy taught her a long time ago. I couldn't really blame those notes for approaching her the way they did, as annoying as it must have been. A beautiful girl in an arcade was like a fresh spring in the desert, especially for the people seeking refuge from their daily lives. It was only human of them to approach and call out such beauty and wonder. <laughs> he's so, he's so, like, obsessed. <laughs> They were just really lonely, huh? <laughs> ah! Wake up. I mean, if you wanted to verse someone, you could easily do that online. They must have been really starved for human contact if they bothered to come all the way to the arcade in real life. You can sit the kinship fighting with other outcasts. You could also be rejected at school and work, you know? Just the both of you here in the darkness of the arcade, punching it out. I think this is how all fighting games should be played online. You wouldn't know who you were going against, just climbing the ranks mindlessly. But here you can just peek around the corner and see your rival. Whatever, not that I care. <laughs> Depending on the bowling alley, it costs $20 per person. Yeah, God! Yeah, bowling alleys can be expensive. I may stood up suddenly and walk deeper into the bowels of the shop. OMG, this guy ain't over in the claw machines, go me! It wasn't alone anymore. There was no more waiting for awkward nerds that hit on her as she sat alone in the cabin. She had a partner and all the fans and followers in the world feeling the emptiness in her heart. I don't think we we're really the kind of people to blow all our money on claw machines or burst each other on racing games like the other screechy couples though. I wish they had a merry-go-round here. Let's go home. But I had fun. I think this will be one of those days that will come back to me once in a while when I see something random. Let the bright lights and loud noises the arcade behind us and everyone just hop on our phones and find someone to play it. <gasps> oh, so cute! Look at this art! Hello, kitties! It's Kay Angel, the arcade angel. What did y'all get up to today? I went to an arcade. I wasn't huge or famous or anything. But I just passed by while I was on a walk and decided to go in by myself. Yeah, I have no boyfriend by myself. And guess what, guys? I saw a claw machine with my merch in it. It was very exciting. I saw some schoolgirls and they were talking about how cute they were and how they wanted some. I was so happy. I was stepped in the cat stuff for myself. But man, arcade goer demographics have changed so much. It was such a nice arcade, but there wasn't a single nerd in sight. I bet it's because you guys are all cooped up at home gaming instead of going outside to play games. <laughs> Who else will fill the dark, dingy corners of the arcade if not for you all? Who else is going to stand around with their arms folded like bison and backseat game the whole time then go out for ramen together with the other randoms whose real names you don't even know? You guys gotta start pretending like you're in Umehara's ma manga and go out and do this. I'm begging you. <laughs> Just like, go outside. 
Like, that sounds so much fun. I almost wish I could do it too. I guess nowadays pro gamers are celebrated so much that they lost their gloomy, nerdy reputation. But you know, it's kind of sad that they have to act all professional and stuff now that big money's on the line. I mean, people usually become gamers because they'd rather not deal with the real world and they go to the arcade and meet their little group of nerds who feel the same way, right? It wasn't much, but it was their slice of joy and now they have to deal with the real world because they play games. I bet there's a whole bunch of people who would love nothing more than to play games with others but are forced to stay in the dark because they can't or don't want to act all hype for these big companies and stuff. Anyways, just my thoughts for the day with the arcade. If I'm talking shit, then just ignore me. <laughs> if you haven't gone inside in a while, then do it. Go play a game with someone you can see face to face. But shower first, okay? Promise me you will. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Bless. <laughs> Please shower. Play. I took a sour on my tongue. Hi, Pookie. Hee <laughs> hee, I had so much fun yesterday. I did it! Yes! I didn't fumble! Where will you take me next? Surprise me. Oh. Oh, I didn't have to save. Okay, let's go here now. We're gonna go on so many dates. This is Nanako Broadway, known for being the mecca for nerdy stuff. I love this place. Nice choice, Pichan. Akiba's, <laughs> Akiba's pop practically baby shit compared to Nakano. It's time to get freaky and geeky. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is she saying? I'm gonna get freaky and geeky. This is the kind of place that's best enjoyed once a month. He steps inside. Ready to be swept up by its holy corridors. Making it to Nautical Broadway could be for people like us a pilgrimage, because we're gamers. Entering its hallowed halls made us devout believers of subcultures, regardless of whether or not the other visitor had that kind of mindset. By the way, if you didn't know, the ground floor, better known as the first floor, is used as a thoroughfare, but keep going, no, I think eventually I'm going to... Oh, I'm going to get the hell out of here. Oh, I'm going to get the Wow, the first floor actually looks kind of normal, except for the giant Madarake. Anyway, look, there's even some stairs that go down to a supermarket. Okay. It's a shop selling gacha, punchmon, punchmon, punchmon cards too. This place is nerdy as hell. Oh, MG, a shop that always, that's always having closing down sales to draw customers in. I thought they died out there in Akiba, but it looks like they still got some of its kin here. It was crowded here on the first floor, but of course it was, as any thoroughfare would be. As such, this was where all the normie shops were. You only start seeing the really nerdy stuff from the second floor up. Also, if you plan on visiting the second floor, make sure you take the stairs. The lift will take you straight to the third floor, so watch out. I can't even imagine how many people missed the second floor because they didn't know this. With her expert knowledge, or maybe coincidental luck, Ame bounced over to the stairs and headed up without even giving the normie shops so much as a glance. She's so different. She doesn't like normie shops. Oh, look at all these trading cards and old books, and there's anime girl plastic vinyl figures, dojinshis, and eroge. They really got everything here. And that's porn. Yeah, this game shop got really good stuff. There's stacks of really rare retro games in the window. Holy shit, that's expensive. Well, duh, they would be. Everyone who works here probably has all the good shit memorized. Damn, I was kind of hoping I'd be able to score some bargains like those local secondhand shops that just slap prices on whatever. Sad. Ame probably knew she'd have no luck. But held out hope anyway in case she could score or something good for stream. She was probably talking this much to practice for what she'd say tonight, too. Truth be told, there are really any places left that would share rare things for cheap, even out the boonies. The shops that lasted this long were able to do so because they knew the highest prices they could sell their stock at. This guy's a nerd, bruh. <laughs> he chan Plus, the places that try to beat their competition by listing their items below market value would, would get their goods snapped up so quickly, you'd hardly have time to pick. Not to say that bargain hunting was impossible these days, but you 
resume is pretty as be incredibly lucky. Oh, I see even cafes here. Maybe I should just retire and open a chill cafe here. Oops, don't tell me when I said that. The dirtiness is even stronger up here with all the gunbombing and rider exclusive shops. You won't really get this in Akiba. This place is basically nostalgia heaven for parents. I can see them buying toys here so they can live their glory days vicariously through their kids. <laughs> I see roasting them. But I guess the kids would be happy to be surrounded by so many books and toys. This is a weird place for sure, but that's why a lot of families come here. This place is probably turning hundreds of kids into geeks who grow into robot and top Oku, Oku loving adults. The circle of life and all, huh? Uh, many dark nerds who visiting in a week, they would probably be our best fit. Oh. <laughs> For the light of Nanako gathered in the form of couples and families. A big yin and yang of them. Oh, look, this sprite is so cute. Oh, look at the bookstore. They got some really controversial stuff over there. When the V Tenchi dating sim? Bro, that would be so cool. It like fits into the lore too, so. Um, um, like Ned's lore video? It literally fits into that. Mm, we might need to make it happen. <laughs> She got completely off the deep end, sucked in the by the whirlpool of nerd shit. That's literally me. <laughs> literally. Hmm, the highest floor just hits different. It really feels like the good old days are perfectly preserved here. I like the second floor, which you can easily reach. It has a chaotic collection of vintage show era toys, manga, and magazines. There is even an arcade wall, though, for everybody come to need from world captains. Even for the first case, you could immediately eat stuff of the shops here in paradise for a select portion of nerds. You think Ame likes Final Fantasy? If she likes Final Fantasy, she's really me. Look, they even got anime cells here. Oh, I love CCs. This is so cool. Hey. You ever think about how cells aren't sold as merch, so the ones on the market were sold by some animator who needs a pocket money? I mean, it's cool. Animated girls will get a chance to own a piece of series they love, but it's sort of giving me mixed feelings, you know? It's kind of like if I saw someone selling something autographed for them, I'd be pretty annoyed, but on the other hand, they're going to be selling it because they're really strapped for cash, and they wouldn't be selling it if they couldn't help it. Also, their family members are selling it for the like, positive way. <laughs> she is a yapper, bruh. If the collector passed, a family could either sell their things in a second-hand shop like Mataraka or shut them away in a closet somewhere. An outsider wouldn't be able to tell if it would be more respectful to sell them th things or keep them. However, they would know that either option would be better than begging them up and throwing them away. They'll definitely were just silver pocket money, though. Oh well, it's not my business. I'm just gonna grab a Tishko Kutel and move on. <laughs> when she left the shop with their purchase, she nodded and headed for the stairs. It seemed like she had her fill of nerdiness for the day. Now that she spent the day surrounded by nerd shit, her strings would probably reflect that too, or maybe they won't. One thing I was sure though, if she showed the fans the side of her more, she'd attract even more annoying fans. Sure, maybe there was some merit to taming them in the Kaya Angels fans, but is it really worth it when they have the emotional intelligence of a five-year-old? Damn. He does not like her fans. Tired of walking out this in a stream today, I'm gonna stare at my cell all night and then sleep, otherwise I'm gonna tell- I'm never gonna tell my nurse that I got one, or otherwise they get on my ass about how to probably store it in his plate. No stream tonight. He had so much fun yesterday. Who you take me next? Surprise me. Oh, we're gonna go on a date to the hospital, bros. Let's go. <laughs> a date to the fucking mental hospital, bro. Are you seriously taking me to the hospital for a date? You're lucky you had me, because any other girl would have dumped your ass straight away. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's fine. I'm nearly out of meds anyway, so it's good timing. You planned this date because of that, didn't you? You're always so on top of things. Thanks, Pichan. <laughs> He's fine with it. Today, we were at the psych ward. Ame often came here to pick up her various pills and prescriptions. She had SSRI, stronger stuff for a really bad day, sleeping pills, medicine that stopped her from suddenly recalling things that were too painful to remember, all sorts of things. If she ever ran out of those, she'd have to play a dangerous game of facing reality all on her own. 
Since Ahmed's pills are running low, I decided to bring her here before things got out of hand. Okay, smart thing. Oh, wait. Yeah, this is my plate. I decided. Oh, yeah. Doesn't it seem counterintuitive to have a system where people who struggled with doing things on time all the time had to pick up their meds on time all the time? That That's so true. I didn't even think about that. I always. I. I always run out of meds, like, before I realize, and then I have to, like, be, like, a day or two without them, <laughs> because I forgot to order them. And then, you know, you know, it's not great. <laughs> hey, you ever think about the people you see in waiting rooms? I think the ones I see here are especially unique. This ward accepted many patients with tough cases, so the waiting room can be quite confronting, too. Most of them weren't that out of the ordinary, though. Like the old folks playing their Game Boys. <laughs> Even though they was released way past their time. There's old people playing Game Boys, bruh. Those who wander back and forth in the corridors like empty seats. The kids who clung to their mothers unmoving, unspeaking. As different as they were, there's one thing they all had in common. They were all living with unthinkable traumas that regular mentally healthy folk couldn't even begin to imagine. Yay! I've been telling you, my ideas keep getting stolen. Every day by famous mangakas. I'm the one who originally invented the dark fantasy genre. I've already told you this before! There's a man, middle-aged perhaps, in a room somewhere, shouting, probably arguing with his doctor, as expected to be in this ward. All the staff seem used to it. Anyone who want to work here would no doubt have to be able to take those kind of things outbursts without affirming or denying them. The man raged on, still inflamed by the plagiarism. Vince was happening. He looks so cute in this outfit. It's happening all the time on my website! Shot sick. Suka ni Naro, that everyone can post their light novels to. They're all reading my stories to there and ripping me off. Even the ones I get anime adaptations, except their NCPCs are all shit and bland. The shining went for a good while. Ah, oh, Mr. Adored. Face peaceful and composed. Everyone here is fighting their own battles the best they can. It's tough when your worst enemies and best friends both come from the inside of your head. True. I know what that feels like. There was a time where it felt like I had insects buzzing around in my head all day long. They would fly around and screech and cause me all sorts of grief. I'd probably scream like that man too, just to stop hearing them for a second. I fought that battle alone, just like he probably is. I watched and treed as Abe's face grew solid. It was a rare sight. I laid my hand on top of hers and laced our fingers together. If someone cut the two of us, out of context right now. We'd just be like any other couple enjoying each other's company side by side. However, we weren't like any other couple. I mean, how many others out there would spend their date at a psych ward? It didn't matter to me though. We're Ami. Um, hey, we are both part of people that I was spending our time here. For people who have to tough it out alone, they must really hate me for having someone like you with me. Maybe they'd even curse me for being blessed with such an adorable face too. <laughs> I wouldn't blame them if they hated me for building a name for myself and earning money through my streams by using my outcast energy to attract fans and sympathy. It must be something like a crass traitor to them. If they were pointing behind my back and saying I was faking it all for clout, I wouldn't even blame them at all. I certainly feel like it on most days, but who would I be if I didn't turn my mental illness into a business? <laughs> okay, girl boss. Hello, Tony. <laughs> Okay, girl boss. I'd just be a stupid middle school dropout. I have my good looks too, but they can only get me so far in this cruel world. I only get so big as K Angel because of my hard work. They won't let anyone talk down to me about all the time and effort I've invested. Whatever. That's all just fluff anyway. Having a partner like you who would keep tabs on my meds and pay me to get more when I'm nearly out automatically makes me more privileged than I have the people here on this earth. <gasps> I wouldn't have the right to even look at the man beyond the door of that eye. Hee <laughs> hee. Hey cuties, it's Kate Angel, your totally normal internet angel who has a super normal brain. <laughs> me, I mean, this is me when I start stream. Guys, I'm so normal. What do y'all get up to today? I went upstairs. 
I went to the upstairs doctor for the first time in a while today. Aren't I good? Well, it's nothing special. We should all normalize getting professional help when we need it. Anyway, it took me meds earlier, so if you see a bit out of it, that's why. If I say something weird, no, I didn't. But if I did, just give me a pen gentle poke in the comments. This place I go to is pretty well known, actually. I looked up all my symptoms and just picked a doctor that seemed like they would get it. So whenever I go, I see a lot of people like myself in there. Surprising thing is if you look up the hospital's reviews, they're actually super bad. They're all like, the doctors never take me seriously. They're all quacks. Well, I guess all online reviews are kind of like that. But, you know, the people writing them probably weren't in the best state of mind, and yet they continue to go to that hospital. When you think about it, wouldn't all those low reviews actually mean the place is good then? I know it's good for me because the staff there listening to me make me feel okay. My point is, the reviews are so bad because the patients feel like they can express themselves however they like, which is actually a good thing. The world can be such a tricky place, huh? Anyway, if you are going through it right now, I hope you can find a professional that you vibe with. But before that, get yourself something warm to drink for yourself and comfy bed and get a good night's sleep. I'm gonna send you all to bed now, so get ready! Good night now, my little nerds! Flash! 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 Hehe, <laughs> I had so much fun yesterday. Where are we going to be next? Surprise me. Yes. Urban exploration. Of the city? Okay. When you said you were taking me to do some urban exploration, I thought you were just gonna take me to a generic old part of town swarmed by insta girlies and I was ready to beat your ass. But this abandoned school is pretty sweet. Nice one, Pichan. I thought I was gonna die from having to climb up this mountain after getting train sick from that super long ride, but it was so worth it. Stepped inside the bear school, breathed in his musty air, kept us as we went. Through this wooden building, tucked away in the mountains, was like traveling back in time. The village it had been part of was long deserted, and the whole place felt like a ghost town. There was a small slice of the world unknown, the shallow dreams that once were, the lives that were being lived once upon a time, the chairs and tables that were already rotting, perhaps still waiting for students to come back and learn with them again. Little did they know, however, that their fate was to be forgotten and eventually destroyed. Okay. I may seem to be enjoying this desolate atmosphere. I hated school. It feels good to see one in such a sorry state. <gasps> Thank you for the follow. Well, at least she likes it. Even if our reasons were a little unconventional. Hmm, something, something nostalgia. This place must have molded so many kids into cogs for the great machine of the wage, <laughs> wage cuckery. <laughs> it's only fair that it would go down like this then. <laughs> Oof, harsh. Yeah, but no one could argue that being anti-establish is a core part of what it makes a streamer a streamer. If someone like her saw refuge on the internet away from the educational system, the society that rejected her stood for everything that these institutes tried to squash and shove in their students as a small mind that taught them how to socialize and come forward. <gasps> <laughs> you know a video about about a truant middle school dropout exploring a band school would actually be the perfect video. I'd put on my best horror stream screaming and the views would roll in like an avalanche. Nah, make cringe TBH. Plus, it's supposed to be a date for just two of us. It'll be our little secret. It's not like I brought my K-Angel outfit anyway. LOL. Ame started with taking full advantage of the fact that the building was a bit and by running around and kicking everything she could get her hands or feet on. She kicked the wall so hard she got her foot stuck in a resulting hole. But all in all, she seemed to have a great time. Absolutely wrecking the symbol of her childhood pain. Yay! Wish I'd done the school I went to. I should have torn it to pieces and raised the whole thing to the ground. I wish I'd made everyone who bullied me get down on their knees and apologize. No, that's not enough. I should have made them jump out the window. Not too high up so they die, but just enough so they break their bones. <laughs> I was in hell. I hated them so much. I wanted so badly to climb on the spider's throat if only to look down on them. I swear my soul had become someone they'd be mad jealous of. I think I did anyway. Uh, I'm more rich and famous than they ever could be. 
I have a wonderful and loving partner too. It's not like they know it's me when they look at K-Angel. So much for throwing them into the pits of despair and jealousy. They'll just go about their little lives and probably don't even remember that they even went to school with me. Mm, yeah, they probably don't remember. <laughs> I just want them to hear them say my deepest apologies. I never knew you had such an emotional... <laughs> support for millions of people around the world yes that's what makes you uh that's what makes you good <laughs> that's so kind and generous i'm practically a but but i don't know how to say that I went crazy and started throwing shit. Real. Hey, Katie, this is K-Angel, the middle school dropout. Angel. You know, it's all me worrying what I did today. Well, I keep wondering because I'm not gonna tell ya. As angels have a lot of secrets. You need to keep from you human. And if you're getting ready to accuse me of having a boyfriend, stop right there. I had no need for one because I'm devoted to being your angel. <laughs> so don't worry, you just keep standing me. If you really want to know what I did today, then let's see some red in the chat. Hey, don't actually do that. It's a whole 10,000 yen, but mm, I do love those zeros. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> oh man, I love being with you guys on stream here. I have so much fun and I really mean that. I'm not just saying that because I want you guys to give me money, okay? It's just one of those nights, you know, and you guys have it so tough out there. That's why you're all watching some girl on the internet, right? I really feel for you guys. I can't ever hope to truly understand what you're going through and it might not be my place to say this, but let's all promise to do our best together and get through our days. Okay? That's all I wanted to say anyway. I'm going to bed. And I hope you guys can get through another day of being wage cuts and study betas with a smile. Plus, so real. I'm so tired of being a wage cut. He had so much fun yesterday. We're going to be next party. Let's go to the beach. Each. The beach. Oh, she's so cute. Beach when it's cold? Genius idea, Pichan. No, I mean like that for real unironically. It's so quiet because there's no one else around. It's not like I would have went in the water anyway. So it doesn't matter if it's cold. Good choice. I may smiled. She seemed happy enough with my choice. He stared out into the great big ocean, the mother of all life. As humans, I think we're all made to feel something inexplicable when we come face to face with large bodies of water. Quitting Ame, the contrarian streamer spends most of her time shut in her room. Any other person would have wished for a bright sunny day, but not Ame or me. The sky was gray and gloomy. And the perfect kind of weather to get the moody teenager inside going for this. Hey, <laughs> Real. You ever look at the ocean and start thinking about offing yourself? Not like because you want to die, but more like if you dove straight in and kept going, merciless mother nature would eventually take you into her embrace and then your life too. Arr! The scary thing about nature. Two years, baby. We. Oh, two years! Thank you. Thank you, Prez. Love you. The scariest thing about nature would probably be the fact that it had no feelings. No matter how much you screamed or begged, the oceans and wilderness would never relent. The best thing to do when you were stranded or drowning would be to stay calm. Maybe that was why a lot of people chose to end their lives with nature. Unlike humans, the earth would never react, even when faced with a dying person. Even if you have no real desire to die, you just sometimes end up in a situation or place where you think about how easy it would be to die if you just made a few specific moves. Kind of like that author, I think, that talks about being overcome by something like an evil spirit. Who knows how many of our inexplicable actions, like murder and suicide, could be attributed to the nefarious entities entering our minds. And it wouldn't be restricted to just big serious things like those either. Maybe they controlled even the little things in our lives, the trivial actions that we cannot otherwise explain. Hey, you know, I assume, I, 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 
Ah, uh, saw Mu as I committed suicide with his girlfriend by drowning in the river. I wonder if they really did that with the intention to die. I got curious about him one day and did some research. I found out that he made a lot of suicide attempts throughout his life. I thought that we were with the woman he was seeing at the time. One even ended the woman's death. I'm not even gonna comment how messed that up that is, cause he's long dead anyway. Why they drown your lover seems like such a spur of the moment passion thing or last resort attempt to reconcile with whatever weakness you perceive to have in your mind. It's not interesting if someone does and knew that he would show them rope and say he was serious about killing himself. And then they just felt troubles and they felt like no matter how the hell they talked to the help of he would not accept. I don't like when people go on social media and say they're going to give us all the desperate good for care of these things. It can get really dangerous and snowball the more you do it though. Anyway, that's what I think about every time I come to the beach. <laughs> like, why does she think about that when she goes to the beach? I should breeze kicked up and my chest ache a prick resembling a wound made by a pointed instrument. My mind took snapshot of the girl and the ways I become brace bravely aware of the fact that I had a heart capable of so oh see like her scars hey Pichan what if I asked you to walk into the ocean with me right now which one would be true love accepting without any protest or trying to convince me to stay and live <laughs> don't think too hard over it I wasn't being serious I have an important life mission that no evil spirit could take away from me right now Okay, let's go home now. It's dark and my poor little nerds need me. I like the ocean ASMR. Guys, you ever think about killing yourself? Thank you, Sis Kate Angel. Should I say Jay Angel because I'm a jellyfish today? I went to the beach earlier and saw the ocean, so I'm not afraid anymore. I didn't go in because it was too cold, but it's not like I would have gone in if it were hot anyway. I'll leave that kind of stuff to you, humans. Or maybe I could leave cyberspace so we can go see the ocean together. <laughs> If you guys did go to the beach though, I bet you'd still all be glued to your phones. Unless you're swimming, but you guys blowing. You need to take photos of any of them to look like no filter for your insters, you addicts. Maybe a bathhouse or a sauna would be better then, since you won't be able to bring your phones in. You be forced to forget the chaos and internet and just focus on relaxing in the baths and hot steam. Wait, is that why saunas are getting so popular these days? Because people just want to forget about the internet for some while? Anyway. It's time for all you nerds to put your phones away and go to bed. Forget about all those idiots online that and get some goddamn rest. Promise me you'll do that. Good night, you guys. Les! Les! Yeah, it's a petite game collection. It's like a, it's like a needy streamer mini games. We only have one more left. We're almost done with this game. Well, there's like four games, I think. And I think there's gonna be more, like, uh, because this is only Petite Game Collection 1. Katanka Tonk. The train shanked, or the train clanked as it carried two lone passengers forward. Toward Ame's childhood home. She really spoke about her family, never even explained where their house was exactly. However, despite that, Gichan still suggested they visit. Regardless of whether heaven or hell is waiting for them, it was a life partner's duty to follow their other half into it. I was scared of being happy. I mean, look at me. I may be cute and pretty, and sometimes my brain cells kind of work, but I'm not exactly someone who deserves to be happy. Every time I thought about it, I feel like I was being crushed by a weight on my chest. It comes back every time K Angel gets more followers and pure fans who genuinely like her. I keep thinking that karma will get me for one day for whenever I go to bed. I can't help but think that I'm going to wake up in a flame war and everything will just come crashing down. I may sometimes woke up in the middle of the night screaming, perhaps escaping from a punishment worse than death that her mind had conjured up. The better her life was during her waking hours, the worse her nightmares would become. Not even the thought of being on a date could chase away those fears. But even, but even with it hanging over my head, I had fun. Is this her? But even with it hanging over my head, I had fun. It only pulled out of those claws of my own mind for a little while. I started to even think that maybe I could be allowed to be happy. And that thought is getting a little stronger. And dog, dog, dog. The train clank thought is getting carried to the passage forward. Watching the sun down at the beach, enjoying your youth at arcade at night, fighting against my inner demons at the hospital, nerdy out, come both together, a shopping retro prize, where I've a child at about minutes, go filling. You know, TBH, I thought it was all kind of stupid. It's like, it's all kind of pointless, you know? Well, 
Uh, I guess it does give me content for my streams at least. <laughs> Ahmed was both Peachan's girlfriend and an angel devoted to the hundreds and thousands of nerds waiting on the other side of the screen. She was prepared to turn any situation experienced into content. But on the flip side, this meant that whatever she went and whatever she did, there'd be countless shadows just waiting around the corner. The stress of having to constantly switch between just a regular girl and one of the most popular streamers ever was immeasurable. The more it built up, the more it fed into the air unease that hung over her. Her world was always covered in a shroud of some indescribable anxiety. She didn't have her face with her hair so she wouldn't have to like look straight at that uncomfortable something. It was a bad side to take but she chose to walk into those horns and despite everything the train continued to run, never able to speak a single word. Whatever thoughts simmered away in Amma's head, the mechanical clanking and rattling erased it all. But you know, the only choice I have is to accept happiness. Rain slowed with a beat hauled as it arrived at the final step. Two passengers alighted and headed for their destination. Aw, oh, she's so cute! Oh my F. Oh my F. I will make my life a happy one. Their steps are synced to each other. They walk side by side. Slowly, slowly. I'll do it for you, Pichan. Thank you for never leaving me and always being there for me. And I'll do it for myself, too. I'm a little scared, but I think I can do it. A moment of silence stretched between them. Their steps continue, however, carrying them forward to their goal. Part of me thinks that love is just playing pretend. I mean, 90% of the couples end up breaking up, so couldn't you say that they were all just hitting everything on the short moments that felt good? <laughs> Listen to me being an edge lord. But I thought I just had to get that out there. And you tell me that's not true, even if you didn't really believe it. Right? There was no reply from her partner. Rame took it as a silent agreement and skipped half. No matter what happens from now on, I know that all dates we had in this moment of us going where we need to go all together was real. And that's enough for me. Smiled as a lie left her lips. Ooh. When she spoke to her doctor last, she said nothing but lies. Technically, her claims of insomnia and chronic fatigue were untruthful. The medicines that would be prescribed to her did help stabilize her. Her fundamental imbalances and misalliances weren't anything as superficial as those symptoms, but she wasn't about to reel them to anybody. Would anyone be able to understand the internal or inner workings of the girl who called herself the internet angel? Would any doctor or lover be able to do that? Maybe her partner, her peach on, was the only one who could. At the very least, the one that didn't remain true is the one that she headed towards her goal with her own two feet. Peachon said nothing. To be more exact, nothing had been said since the moment they met. When Ame said she wanted to go on the date, the proclamation had been met with neither sound nor reply. Almost there. Where? Isn't this exciting? What is it? I hope our love will last forever. Promise you won't let me seeing that stop you from staying. I love you, Peachon. I love you so much. Um. Yay, we did it!